Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Happy Sunday sa lahat ng ating mga kapatid sa Panginoon. Teka, meron eko yung aking sound. Okay, so welcome po sa ating uh, Ecclesia Goshen, sa ating online, Sunday online worship. At tayo po ay uh, lalapit sa Panginoon sa umagang ito. Atin po siyang sasambahin at pupurihin sapagat siya po ay karapat dapat na sambahin. Siya kasi ang may likha sa atin, He created us is imager. Okay? So, let's uh, welcome the presence of God over this place. And before that, I'll just, I'll, I'll pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you cleanse the place that we are meeting today. Wherever we are right now, whatever impurities that was committed on the place, we ask for the blood of Jesus to cleanse it so that every impurities will be cleansed only by the blood of the Lamb, by the blood of Jesus, so that your presence can come even in every homes that we are right now, in every places that we are right now, we are applying the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Good Shepherd, you are the source of all true and lasting joy. We praise you for your power, which is beyond compare. We worship you for your wisdom, which is beyond understanding. You can meet all our needs. You restore the brokenhearted and heal the wounded. You have revealed yourself to your people and are building your church against which the gates of hell cannot prevail. How great you are. Lord, fill our hearts with love as we respond by singing praises to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Why do we worship? 1 Chronicles 16.23 Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord, and most worthy of his praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. 
tremble before him, all the earth. So why do we worship? We worship to place adoration on who God is in our lives. He is love. He is peace. He is joy. He is the reason that we worship. Ay po ay pangunahan ng Jesus, Lord of the Nation Church from Cagayan de Oro City, headed by their pastor, Pastora Connie Gallego, and their worship leader is Sister Mila Maranya. Pangunahan po nila tayo sa ating pong pagsamba sa Panginoon. Asal man tayo sa oras na ito, allow the Holy Spirit speak to us as we worship the Lord this morning. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you've given unto us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you, God, for your goodness, for your mercy, Lord. We even thank you, Lord God, na sa tibok, si mana, padayang ka ginoong, ang nagauban ka namo. Salamat kay ginoong sa mga kadaugan. Salamat, O God, Lord, that you've preserved our lives, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, Lord, we want to bless you. We want to exalt your name. We want to glorify you, God. We want to sing praises to your name, O God, for you are great, Lord Jesus. You're worthy, Lord God, to receive our praises and adoration, Lord. We exalt your name, God. We exalt your name, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray na imong Lord, the waton ginoo ang among mga pagsimba de kanimo karong buntaga, mahan. We honor you, God. We honor you, Father. We bless you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's praise the name of the Lord.
worship you, Lord. Today, Father, we continually, Lord God, declare your glory. We declare, God, your goodness, O Lord. We declare, God, your faithfulness, O Lord.
worship you, Lord. We honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we love you. Father, we worship you. And today we welcome your presence in our midst. Okay, sa ating pong mga kapatid sa Panginoon na uh, kasama natin sa Zoom, we have Sister Carol Avendano, Caroline Floor, we have Brother Beak, we have one from iPhone, we have uh, Sister Bernadette, Sister Gia, dito po sa ating um, uh, FB Live, we have Sister Dali, Pastora Dali Asho, we have J. Hazel Herrera, and my apo na nakikinig ngayon, Anaya Kel Kela Herrera. We have Joyce Ibasco Cruz, Tess Calmada, Reyes, we have Sampagita Senorin, Mignon Alacaba, Annabel Basas, Pastor Jonathan Asho, at yung iba hindi ko pa nabanggit, mamaya na lamang po, I'll mention you before we end our service this morning. Okay, welcome po sa inyong lahat at tayo po ay magpapatuloy ng ating pong pag-aaral tungkol sa, uh, we called it, a biblical theology of the temple. Okay? So we need to understand kung ano ang kahalagahan ng templo. Okay? Last week, we talk about Eden, that the Garden of Eden is a temple. A temple is a place where God dwells. So, Garden of Eden is what? Is a temple. Okay? So, Medyo mahabang series po ito. Pag-aaralan po natin bakit mahalaga ang templo. Okay? Sa Panginoon. Okay? So, it's part to now. So, let's understand. The Bible starts with a garden in Genesis and it ends with a garden in Revelation 22. Okay, Revelation 21 also pictures the entire cosmos. You know, sa English, ang translation ng cosmos is world. Naalala niyo yung John 3.16? For God so loved the world. The Greek word that they use there is cosmos. So the entire universe, not only this, the earth, the entire universe, and the new creation will become the dwelling place of God. That is the plan of God. Remember, there is only plan A. There is no plan B or plan C. God has a, only one plan. He wants to dwell with his own people. Okay? That's why in the Garden of Eden, when God created Adam and Eve, he placed him in a garden. Okay? So this picture in Revelation 21 and 22 fulfills the mission given in Genesis 1 and 2. Remember, Genesis 1 and 2 is not chronologically arranged. And the progress of this mission can be traced throughout the Bible. The Great Commission in Matthew 28 is only the extension of Sandali lang po. Matthew 28, 19-20, diba, the Great Commission, it's only the extension of what the mission that God gave to Adam and Eve. Okay? In Genesis 1 and 2, Eden is the dwelling place of God. Tandaan niyo po yan. Eden is the dwelling place of God. 
And God commissioned Adam and Eve to expand the boundary of that dwelling place to fill the whole earth. So in other words, God wants that the whole earth becomes the dwelling place of God. And when God created Adam, He created him outside the garden, and then He put him inside the garden. So Eden, the earth I mean, it's not all Eden. There's only a certain place, okay, that is called Eden. Actually, there is a boundary. There are four rivers. Sandali lang po, maingay yung aso namin. So Eden is the dwelling place of God. And God commissioned Adam to expand the boundaries of that dwelling place. So look at the assignment that God gave to Adam. The first assignment was given to Genesis 2.15. And sabi ron, the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden para ano daw? To work it and keep it. Why the work is, why work it and keep it? Because Eden is already perfect. Adam has nothing to add on Adam, on, on the garden because it's all perfect. Okay? To keep it. But the problem is, Adam failed to keep the garden. Why? He allowed the fallen son to deceive him and eventually God kicked him out of the garden. And the second assignment that was given to them is, sabi niya, in Genesis 1, 28, sabi niya, Let us make one in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so God created man his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female. He created them, and God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. And fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion. So the earth doesn't need subduing. Why? It is already perfect. What God is telling Adam is the rest of the earth. So the first assignment is to keep and to work in the garden. Okay? Maintain the garden. And then expand it to the rest of the earth. That the earth will become a dwelling place of God. Yun ang trabaho natin. While God's original call was thwarted by sin in Genesis chapter 3, God continued to establish His dwelling place among the parkyard until the construction of the tabernacle and temple. Even though sin, sin enters the world, God continued to establish His dwelling place among His own people. Kaya di ba laging mababasa mo sa Old Testament, You will be my people and I will be your God. I will walk with you, I will dwell among you. Because that is the purpose of God. He wants to be with His people. And after the destruction of Solomon's temple, the prophets anticipate the coming of a new and expanding temple. It is now through the Lord Jesus Christ. And these prophecies begin to be fulfilled in, in Jesus Christ and the Ecclesia. And the Ecclesia... As the dwelling place of God must expand until one day it fills the entire heaven and earth. The entire cosmos become the dwelling place of God. That's why when we got born again, the first thing that God did is to make our body the temple or the dwelling place of God. But it doesn't stop there. 
He wants our territories where we live become the dwelling place of God. He wants the Philippines become the dwelling place of God. Not only the Philippines, the whole world, the cosmos, even the whole universe become the dwelling place of God. So mission does not begin with the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 18-22. It begins in Genesis chapter 1 and 2. So, but God's mission is from Genesis 1 until the new heaven and the new earth become the dwelling place of the Lord Almighty in Revelation 21 and 22. No, no, Paul. So, He wants to dwell. He wants to dwell with his own people. So this ultimate picture of the whole earth filled with God's presence fulfill God's original intention from the sanctuary of Eden. Diba sabi ng Bible, then the whole earth is filled with the glory of God as the water covered the sea. So that is the ultimate picture. That the heaven and earth becomes what? The dwelling place of God. So we begin therefore with Eden. Then nagsimula sa Eden. Nagkasala ang tao. Ni-restore back ni Lord sa New Testament. And our beginning is where? In the Garden of Eden. That's where we begin. Now, look at the context of Genesis 1 and 2. Lahat ng tao, nag-create si Lord ng longing, a yearning desire. They called it a godly-shaped vacuum. Kaya kahit anong gawin ng tao na punuan yung longing na yan, kailanman hindi yan mapupuno. It cannot be filled up with wealth with the things of this world or anything of this world it is only god can feel the longing the yearning desire that we have and that is god godly shape vacuum si lord ang nagcreate niyan because we are a creatures of longing kaya maraming tao Normal ang maglong ka. Magkaroon ka ng yearning desire. Bakit marami mga tao ang iba-iba ang kanyang gusto? Diba? Yung iba, ang kanyang passion ay sapatos. Yung iba naman ay damit. Yung iba naman ay tao. Yung iba-iba. And even all those things na dinidesire niya, inakamtan niya, there's still what? emptiness in his life or in her life. Why? Because it is a godly shaped vacuum. It is only God can fill it. So when we misdiagnose the object of this longing, we become frustrated and disappointed. Example, our longing for relationship open get frustrated in conflict. Diba? May asawa ka o may karelasyon kang tao, kaibigan, O, diba? And most of the time, it get, it get frustrated when there is a conflict. Diba? Next, our longing for satisfaction get frustrated in discontent. We human being never satisfied. We always keep on wanting and wanting and wanting. The longing of our hearts are frustrated from this separation. But this longing are properly satisfied in the dwelling place of God originally found in Eden. Nung sinabi ng Panginoon kay Adam and Eve, sabi niya, when you eat this fruit, you will surely die. 
The word died there is what? To be separated. We were separated from God. And because of that, what happens? There is what? A longing that is, that was created in us. A longing for God. And that longing are probably properly satisfied in the dwelling place of God originally found in Eden. That's why we have to begin and go back to Eden. God's presence in His dwelling place satisfies our longing for relationship, satisfaction, and significance. In Genesis, show how God intend those longing to be properly satisfied in Eden. Ipinakita doon ni Lord, di ba? Adam walked with God even in the cool of the day. That's how the, there is no exact English to describe the intimacy between man and God. And God's presence gives life and purpose in Eden. So we should not wonder that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in Him. We have to remember, we will always be restless until we find God. And the only way we can find God is in His dwelling place. Eden is presented, last time we talked about, as a temple and a dwelling place of God satisfying our longings for life and purpose. So, doon lang natin makukuha yung longings natin, yung yearning desire natin, doon lamang sa presence ng Diyos. Ano niyo po? Now, the second thing na pinagagawa ng Diyos kay Adan at Eva is to expand Eden. They were in the Garden of Eden, and the second assignment that God gave them, the first assignment is to work it and keep it. And the second assignment was to take dominion over the earth. Ibig sabihin, to make the earth like the Garden of Eden. Because Eden is a place of God's presence, and the place of God's presence is a place of worship. Ano ano po? So, sabi ng Bible, when two or three gathered in His name, I am in their midst. That place is a territory. Our life, our zealot is also a territory. Our family is also a territory. Our home is a territory. The city is a territory. The nation is a territory. Koinonia, or fellowship is also a territory. That's why we go to the church. And God, once that place becomes what? A dwelling place of God. And every place of God's presence is actually a place of worship. So the expansion of Eden, therefore, is an expansion of worship. And the bearers of the image of God reflect His presence in worship. Because we were created in the image and the likeness of God. We are bearers of the image of God. That's why we become what? The courier and the carrier of God's presence. Because the Spirit God, the Trinity, is dwelling inside of us. Why? 1 Corinthians 3.16, He made us what? A tabernacle. He made us a temple. Remember? Eden is what? A temple. So, worship is in fact the goal of mission in Eden. Filling the earth by multiplying image bearers in the temple of God's presence who would worship and reflect God's glory to the ends of the earth. So, yun po yung ating work. Okay? 
the image bearers or the imagers of God should multiply and fill the earth with the, His glory. Kaya tayo nag evangelize hindi para lang mapunta ang tao sa langit. So that there will be what? More image bearers that will reflect God's glory to the ends of the earth. Sabi ni John Piper, Worship thou is the fuel and the goal of missions. So what is the significance of the image of God in us? Why God created us in His image and likeness? We are created for what? To resemble and to represent the true in God spiritually. For we are created in His image. When the Lord said, let us create man in our image and likeness, He is saying that He is creating us to be His representative here on earth. What does this mean to be in the image of God? Look, image, images I mean, reflect a greater reality. In Genesis 1, 26 to 27, say that God made Adam in his image or likeness four times. Mm. Very important, John, why God mentioned it four times. In Genesis chapter 2 says that God placed him in a garden like sanctuary. So the discussed natin last time that the that garden of Eden is a sanctuary. It's a temple. It's a tabernacle. Why it is a temple? Because the presence of God is in that place. So in the sanctuary of Eden, Adam and Eve reflect and represent God as his image. Kaya ang tawag sa atin ng Diyos, imager of God. Adam was created in the image of the true in God to indicate his presence and rule over the earth. The only way we can rule with God is what? Through the presence of God in us. When, Ad, when the devil tempted, tempted Adam and Eve to eat the, the fruit of the tree, the devil is actually saying, you can rule the earth without God. Kaya nung sinabi niya, you will become like God. Hmm. That's not the way of ruling. The way to rule God, the way to rule the earth is only through God. Okay? Through the presence of God that is in us. So God's image, Adam and Eve, were to reign with God as kings and representatives of God. That's why in the New Testament, we were called, we become part of what we call Melchizedek priesthood. And that Melchizedek priesthood is about kings and priests. We are kings doing the priestly work. So what does it mean to reign as a representative? You know, the Greek translation of the word image is icon. And you know icon? On a computer screen, an icon is a small picture file that when clicked, ushers in the megabytes of the computer program that it represents. Oh, diba? Uh, try to look to your cell phone. Diba? May makikita kayong icon. Ito, diba? Example. Uh, I-click na natin. Ito, diba? May icon ka nakikita na ganyan. Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. That's an icon. But when you click that one, it will bring you to, the, to a megabytes of file. At mabubuksan mo yung buong file na yan through that icon. Okay? So, metaphorically, humanity is a small picture file in a terabyte of God's glory in creation. 
So we are only icons. Icons do not point to themselves. But icons usher in a far greater reality. We represent. We image God. Similarly, we represent God so that our presence ushers in the presence of the Almighty God wherever we go. That's why one of the sin, pinakamalaking kasalanan sa Diyos ay yung idolatry. Why God hates idolatry? Because God created us in His image and likeness. And the logical thing is to worship the one who created you. And the problem with idolatry, you are worshiping a God that does not create you. Hmm. Kaya naiinsulto ang Diyos sa idolatry. Kaya nga ang hinahanap sa atin ng Diyos ay yung tinatawag na believing loyalty. That we will be loyal only to our Creator. We represent God. And because we represent God, our presence ushers in the presence of the Almighty wherever we go. That's why, okay, magugulat, every time you go, the presence of God is in you. Subukan yung kumain sa restaurant na walang kumakain. Magdudroya ng maraming tao. It's it proven na namin yan. It draws people. Why? Because you are an icon. You are an imager of God. However, the image of God was distorted by the entrance of sin in the world. Alam na natin yan. So we do not represent God's authority and glory as we should. But God didn't stop there. He doesn't stop God because men sin for His plan to make the earth and the cosmos to become the dwelling place of God. It continues even though man continues to sin. Genesis 3, when Adam failed to subdue the serpent, di ba? And, nasira yung image nila. And God's image in us is only restored through the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, he is the perfect image of God. Okay? So 2 Corinthians 3.18, we worship Him and are being transformed into the same image icon from one degree of glory to another. You see, worship is very, very important. It brings us or it transforms us into the same image. Okay? Worship transforms us increasingly to reflect and represent God's presence more clearly as His image and icon. Look at the you know, one degree of glory to another. So, ang ibig sabihin ng Diyos, ay ano, we need to continue worshiping until the glory of God will be seen in us. Okay? As we are transformed to reflect God's presence as His image or imager through worship, then this worship fuels our missions to represent God's authority and then we can now subdue the earth. So basic yung worship. At ang worship ay hindi lang nangyayari tuwing linggo. Kaya nga malungkot, linggo lang umaatin ng Sunday ng worship service. Late pa karamihan. Di ba? God created humanity in His image 
And this image is expressed through humanity's work in having dominion and subduing all the earth. So if we will not practice worship, we cannot subdue the earth because that is the work that God gave us oh, to make every territory a dwelling place of God. And for that territory to become a dwelling place of God, worship must be present. Kaya mahalaga sa bahay nyo, meron kayong altar. Bakit? That is the place where you worship God. And that becomes your house now become a dwelling place of God. More specifically, Adam rules over creation by speaking and naming the animals, di ba? When he was in the garden, God gave him the work. And what is his work? To manage the creation. Speaking and naming the animals. Oh. Same through us today. We might have a, a property. May lupa kayo na sinasaka. Oh. You have to manage that property. And how are you going to manage that property? That place must become what? A dwelling place of God. Just as God ruled over creation by speaking and naming parts of the creation, like in Genesis chapter 1, diba? He spoke to the earth, and the earth responded. Adam, however, failed in his mission and allowed an unclean creature to enter the garden. Oh, yun ang problema ni Adam. Pinayagan niyang pumasok yung creature na yun. Yung nakash. Yung, ang Hebrew word na ginamit dun sa serpent ay ano? Nakash. Nang ibig sabihin, shining one. He did not subdue this serpent, but was subdued by its deception. As a result, Adam and Eve did not extend the divine presence of the garden sanctuary, but they were expelled from it. So, yun ang nangyari. Yung garden, na kung saan naandoon ang dwelling place of God, hindi nila nagawang i-extend into the other parts of the earth. Why? They failed to maintain that garden. And that garden is what? Temple. Kaya we're been encouraging the pastor, make it sure that your church or the place where you gather every Sunday is a sanctuary not only Sunday or prayer meeting ang nagpipray sa lugar na yan. Dapat 24 by 7, yung mga membro nyo pumupunta dyan sa lugar na yan na kung saan kayo nagtitipon. Nag-worship kayo dyan sa lugar na yan because that is the dwelling place of God. Hmm. While the first Adam failed to subdue the serpent, the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ, subdued the serpent. Revelation 12, 9, And the ancient serpent, who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, was thrown down to the earth. Oh, so natalo siya. Okay? It is only by the Lord Jesus Christ. However, tandaan nyo, that serpent continued to make war to those who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Hmm. Kaya meron tayong away, meron tayong warfare na kinakaharap every day because this serpent who is illegal here on earth, they are a squatter and God cannot kick them out. Why? Because it is our work to evict the presence of this fallen sons. And the only way you can evict this is you go to the court in heaven, you go to the judge in heaven and make a petition or submission. So this ancient serpent is now conquered by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. Diba? Sabi ng Bible, we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the, by the word of our testimony. 
Mm. Adam's priestly calling in the garden is what? To guard against unclean influence can be fulfilled through us because of the work of Christ. Mm. Kaya hindi pwedeng si Lord ang magpaalis niyan. Ayo dapat. Kasi tayo ang legal entity dito sa lupa. Tayo ang binigyan ni Lord ng SPA or Special Power of Attorney to exec na gamitin yung kanyang kapangyarihan para siya ipalayasin. But the only way to do that is what? You go to Him as a judge. Why? Sabi ng batas dito sa lupa, it is illegal to take matters into your own hand. Same true in heaven. It is illegal to take matters into your own hand. Why? Because it, your security is at risk. The spirit is still powerful. May power pa rin yan. Hindi nang wala ka naman mababasa sa Bible na tinang, tinanggalan siya ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. They still have. Oh. So, sa experience natin, pabalik-balik lang yung mga squatter, yung mga spirit sa na ating kinakas out. So we can only accomplish our mission as we recognize our identity as icons of God. We are the imager of God. We are the sons of God. Di ba? Like father, like son. Oh. So we don't worry about holiness. A Christian should not have a problem about holiness. Why? Because you have the seed of God in you. You will look like your father because you are his son. At kapag naunawa natin that we are the icons of God, we are the sons of God, you will not have problems about holiness. Because doon ka patungo. Often the demands of ministering to people expose our inadequacy and we become depressed since their needs exceed our resources. Sometimes, mga minister, they experience this one. Because, you know, kahit anong prayer niya, hindi gumagaling. Oh. It's of, of, of our inadequacy. May lalapit sa'yo, magpapapray, may sakit. Ilang best mo na pinag-pray, ganun pa rin. Hindi pa rin gumaling-gumaling. Galing-galing. No, ako ay batang kristyano pa eh. Halos lahat ng pinag-pray ko namamatay eh. Kaya pag merong hospital ministry, hindi na ako sumasama eh. Sabi ko, kayo na lang kasi malas ata ako eh. Yan yung pagkaintindi ko noon. Because that is our inadequacy. And we become depressed. Since their needs exceed our resources. However, these excessive demands remind us that we are only icons. Icons lang tayo. We only represent God. We don't have that power. Nanuwaan niyo po. We are not the answer. It is only the Lord Jesus Christ is the answer. We are created as icons though which the glorious the glories of God present shines. Yun lang ang trabaho natin. Di ba sabi no, let your light shines. Being an icon, we reflect the glory of God's presence in us. Jesus Christ is the perfect image and icon of God who has subdued our enemy. Everything. He is the perfect one. Okay? Only by the presence of Jesus with us and the power of His Word in us can we accomplish His work through our lives. Nanuhan niyo po. Only the presence of Jesus. Without the presence of Jesus in us, mga kapatid, our ability is inadequate. Tandaan niyo po. The demand is so big, we cannot fulfill it. Only God. We are icons 
who conquer through His presence in us. That's why worship is very important. We are created to glow in the dark. Alam niyo yung glow in the dark? O, di ba? Yung parang stick, na, they call it glow in the dark. Hmm. Sa araw, di mo makikita yan. You can only see that in the dark. Okay? Our mission is to glow with the light of Christ in the darkness of this world. Yun ang ating mission. Kaya yung worship, kasi ito'y, itong katawan natin, ginawang tabernakulo ng Diyos. Ginawa niyang templo. Mahalaga yung ano, pagsamba. We only fulfill that mission if we charge our soul in the light through worship. Kaya everyday tayo nag-worship. Everyday tayo lumalapit sa presence ni Lord. Why? Because we are just only icons. Without that presence in us, we can do nothing, mga kapatid. Worship is drawing near to God. Such worship in God's very presence fuel our missions. Without that worship, we cannot fulfill the mission that God has gave us to expand the dwelling place of God wherever we are. So we worship in the temple of God's presence as we enter by the blood of the Lamb and hold to the word of God. So this worship fuels us so that we can conquer our enemy, the ancient serpent. Sabi ng Revelation 12, 11, ano sabi niya? And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they, not, for they love not their lives, even to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But who to you, O earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. Now, the next thing that God wants us to understand is we need to multiply the images of God. The very reason we are discipling people, the very reason we share the gospel to other people, is not for them to go to heaven only. The very purpose of God is to multiply the images of God here on earth. Because in worship, we represent God's image not only to subdue forces of evil, but also to multiply these images of God to fill the earth. The way God wants to fill the earth with His glory is to fill the earth, to fill it with humans, the humans that He created in His image and likeness will become the dwelling place of God. That's why sabi ng uh, Ephesians we become what? Uh, sa First Peter we become what? spiritual houses. We become part of the temple. Alam nyo ba yun? We become, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. And we are the living stone na pinagpapatong-patong ni Lord. And Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Okay? To make us the temple of God. Oh. Remember, each one of us is part of the temple of God. In Genesis 1.28, diba sabi niya, God bless them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, over the every living thing that moves on the earth. Bakit? The command to fill the earth implies that the earth is not yet filled with images 
that reflect God's glory. At the time, konti pa ang tao. Same to today. Even though marami ng mga tao, but yung karamihan mga tao is not yet what? Filled. Or these people does not reflect the glory of God. They are not the imager of God. So our mission is to be used in God's hand to bring about more worshipers in the image of God who might multiply and fill the earth with, with even more worshipers. Diba? Gusto ni Lord na mapuno ang mundo ng mga tao na may image of God. Okay? That's the thing that he said, and the earth is filled with his glory as the water covered the sea. God calls Adam not only to work and to keep the garden of Eden, but also to expand that garden and fill the earth. God wanted to expand the sacred space or the holy place. He wants to expand it. And God wanted to expand that sacred space and dwelling place from the limited confines of Garden Temple of Eden to fill the entire earth. So, yan yung trabaho natin. To fill the entire earth. Ngayon, Pilipinas lang. Ngayon, nasa Makati ka o nasa Manila ka o nasa Mindanao ka, yun lang area mo na yun. Make it sure that place is what? Filled with the glory of God. Oh, it is that first in you. Because you are a territory. Hmm. You have to make it sure that yourself is what? Filled with the glory of the presence of God. And how it happens? You enter the altar, you worship Him. God's ultimate goal in creation was to magnify His glory throughout the earth by means of His faithful image bearers. So that's, that's the ultimate goal of creation. That is the plan A of God. He wants to make this creation as his Eden. Psalm chapter 8, verse 1 and 9. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You see, in all the earth. He wants the earth be filled with his glory. Hmm. Psalm 8, 5 to 6. A glory reflected in humanity who is crowned with glory and honor and given dominion over the works of your hands. Diba sabi niya, what is a man that you are mindful of him? And you have given him what? You have created him a little lower than the angel. And you have given him, you have crowned him with glory and honor and given dominion over the works of your hands. That's the, I believe that is the reason why the devil hates us. Dahil binigay ni Lord sa humanity yung kanyang dominion over the works of his hands. Hindi ibinigay sa mga angel kung hindi sa atin ibinigay ng Diyos. We are created to glorify God by filling the earth with image bearers crowned with that glory. <clears throat> so gusto ni Lord na mapuno ang mundo ng mga tao, ng mga image bearers or the imagers of God. So kapag namborn na ganyan isang tao, that person becomes image bearers. And the first obligation ng Diyos is what? Uh, the first obligation ng image bearer is what? To represent God. He needs to worship God. What does it mean to glorify God? 
We glorify God by multiplying disciples. Diba sabi ni Jesus in John 17, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you have given me to do. I have manifested your name to people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. See? Jesus glorified God by making disciples who kept God's word. Similarly, we glorified God by our mission in making disciples who keep God's word. That person is, he remains a disciple if he will keep the very word of God. So how then do we multiply disciples? Disciples multiply only as the word of God bears fruit in through our lives. So, nagmumultiply lang yung mga disciple daw kapag namumunga ang salita ng Diyos sa buhay nila. Because we are called. Di ba sabi niya, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. What is the work of a branch? To bear the fruit. It is not the problem of the branch to have fruit. It is the problem of the vine. Di ba? responsibilidad ng bahay na magkaroon ng ano ng bunga at ang sanga ang trabaho lang sanga is to bear that fruit Acts 6 7 and the word of God continue to be fruitful para doon naging fruitful yung word of God the number of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem oh. but the word of God bore fruit and multiplied so as soon the word of God multiplied over our lives, then we reproduce and we multiply images of God or imagers of God. So if the church growth is based on programs that do not root people in the living word of God, then they will, in time of testing, will fall away. Kaya napansin nyo, maraming, one time may mga season na maraming umaate ng church, naboborn again. Pero pagkalipas ng ilang buwan, nawawala na din sila. Look at your attendance. Yung attendance card sa inyong mga simbahan. ba Bilangin nyo po yan. Probably that's more than 10,000. So the question is, where are they? Kung meron kayong malaking, na, malaking front door, basically meron din kayong exit door na malaki na pagpasok, lumalabas din. Because if these people will not live according to the word of God, they will not multiply. Nakuha niyo po? They will fall away when the testing comes. So the only way to integrate people into the body of Christ is by the Word of God growing in them. Dapat mag-grow ang Word of God sa buhay nila. That is the way to multiply images of God. Our mission is to multiply disciples or image bearers of God who know and use God's Word to subdue the deceptive work of our enemy in the world. Dapat alam niya yun. Dahil kung hindi, he will be the one subdued by the devil. So we must equip God's people with the sharp sword of God, the word of God, to come from their mouths since we are in union with Jesus and what is true of him in respect is true of us. Oh. Kaya, we need to learn how to speak the word. We need to prophesy the word. Conclusion. So our mission grows out of Adam's and Eve commission to multiply image bearers. Ito mga image bearers na ito is to expound the boundary of God's glorious presence in Eden until it fills the whole earth. 
Kaya nga ang unang trabaho natin mga pastor ay tuluruan ang mga miyembro paano mag-worship kay Lord. At hindi lang sila mag-worship tuwing linggo. Every day in their life they need to worship God. They need to learn how to come into the presence of God. Why? Because this body is what? An altar. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God is dwelling in this body. Our mission is fueled by our worship as God's image bearers in God's tabernacling presence, reflecting and representing God's presence in the earth. So, as an image of God, we will represent God here on earth. That's why, anong ginawa ng Diyos? As He made us a representative of God here on earth, our work is what? To worship God. Remember, when you come to Him and you worship God, you have to remember that you are image bearers. You are an icon of God. Our mission expresses our worship as the Lord's name fills the earth through people crowned with glory and honor. Okay, sabi nyo, what is a man that you are mindful of him? You have created him a little lower than the angel and crowned him with glory and honor. See? We have that glory and honor. He crowned us. That's why the devil so hate us. Diba? He wants us to be disqualified. Oh, to be an imager of God. Hmm. Our goal in mission is worship, mga kapatid. That we might multiply more and more image bearers who worship the king. That is our work. It's to worship. Hmm. So, Eden is a temple. And in the temple, God requires imagers to worship God. Kaya nga ulitin ko, ang isang kasalanan na iinsulto todo ang Diyos ay ang idolatry. Bakit? Tayo pinag-create ni Lord as after His image and likeness. Kaya hindi tayo dapat mag-worship sa ibang Diyos. It's an insult to our Creator. And however, sin threatens this mission. Alam natin yun. Pero kahit na threaten ng sin, hindi tumigil ang Diyos to establish His temple. Okay? Although we are created as image bearers in God's tabernacling presence, who are to multiply and fill the earth, Adam failed in this commission. Hindi nagawa ito ni Adan, they failed. Okay? How will Adam's offspring work out their calling? That's the big question. To be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Yan ang ating pag-usapan next week. Paano yung mga offspring ni Adan? To work out their calling. To be fruitful and multiply. Magparami sila. Maraming sasamba at magpupuri sa Diyos. In Genesis 3, remember, sin enters the world. But nevertheless, God's call to Adam is passed on to his followers. And God did not stop. He continued the Eden even in the midst na ang mga tao ay patuloy na nabubuhay sa kasalanan. That's what we are going to look next week. Okay? So, ang ating pong Diyos ay ano, hindi tumigil sa kanyang pag-imbita sa atin. Hindi siya tumigil na suyuin ang mga tao na bumalik sa kanya. In spite of the sin that people committed,
the plan of God to bring Eden or to make the earth sa dwelling place of God continues. Nakuha niyo po. It doesn't, it, it did not stop. Okay? Because the desire of God is to dwell among His people. Next Sunday, we will talk about the part three of this message. The biblical uh, theology of the temple. The biblical theology of the temple. Kaya mahalaga na maunawaan natin ito. Bakit kailangan natin ng altar? Bakit ang Diyos, bakit in the, in the Old Testament, Abraham built an altar? Hmm. Paano natin ito i-apply ngayong New Testament? Nakuha niyo po. So, napakahalaga po itong katuroan na ito na maintindihan natin. So, ngayon naunawa natin that we are all icons we are imagers of God. As an imagers of God, our work is to worship God. And the place that we are, we need to make it a sacred space. A sacred space means it's a place where God dwells. Your house is, should be a sacred space. That's why you need to build an altar there and so that you can invite the presence of God. Because God wants to dwell among us. Yan ang, yan ang gusto ni Lord. Maka-fellowship niya tayo. Oh. Si Satan at ang mga Diyos-Diyosan, ayaw niya ng fellowship. Ang Diyos lang ang nagre-require sa atin na makipag-fellowship sa Kanya. Hmm. And this idol that the people are worshiping, they never ask for fellowship. Only God who created the heavens and the earth. He wants to dwell among us. Kaya nga niya para mapalapit siya lalo sa atin in the New Testament, He make our body the temple of the Holy Spirit. And as an imager of God, your work to keep that garden of Eden is what? To worship. Amen? Tayo ngayon ay magpasalamat sa ating Panginoon. Lord, we thank you today for bringing us this understanding about Eden. And Eden is a temple. And you want to expand the temple to the whole earth, to all the cosmos. And you made us a imager of God. You made us a representative of God. And as a representative of God, our work that fuels the mission is worship. We thank you so much, Father God, for bringing us in our knees every day, coming to you and honoring you, O Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for crowning us with honor and glory because we are your imager. We bless you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. Okay. Tayo po ay darapo sa ating communion. Can we, if you have some communion element, ilabas nyo na po at tayo po ay sama-samang magsalo at alalahanin ang ginawa ni Kristo doon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Alam po natin that without the shedding of the blood, there will be no remission of sin. Only the blood of Jesus. Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa 1 Corinthians 11.23, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when He was betrayed took bread. 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us now partake the bread. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you, Lord, that it is only through your death you have redeemed us. And because of that redemption, we can now come freely to your throne and commune with you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus for what you have done on the cross of Calvary. Let us now partake the juice. Let us now thank the Lord with our offering. Let's thank Him because He is... worthy to bring worthy po siyang bigyan ng ano ng ating mga pag-alay remember when we come to the Lord what happens when we bring our tithes and offering we honor the Lord we honor him as a king. When we give our tithes, it belongs to him. Mga kapatid, whether we like it or not, the 10% belongs to God. It is not us. Okay? It belongs to the Lord. Yes, I mean, Lord. Will a man rob God? Yes. Through tithes and offering. So, ibig sabihin ng Panginoon that God wants us to honor Him through tithes and offering. So, every time that is the uh, fruit of our labors, and we need to honor God. So, bringing our tithes is honoring God. Amen? So, let us now thank the Lord. Let's continue to honor Him because He owns the heavens and the earth. Lord, salamat po because you gave us a way. You bless us so we can bring our tithes and offering to you every week. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us because we found, we know that you are Jehovah Jireh. And Jehovah Jireh means... You are the one who provides something to offer. Kaya po, salamat sa buong linggong ito, pinagpala mo kami. At dahil doon sa pagpapalang yon, we can now bring to you this offering, and we can honor you, Lord, by this offering. Salamat po, Panginoon, at pagpalain mo ang bawat isa, Panginoon, sa kanilang pong mga endeavor, sa kanilang mga trabaho, ano man ang kanilang ginagawa. Bless them, Father God, and I ask, Lord, that every week, they will be blessed. They have something to give, to offer to you, Lord, because giving of our tithes is a form of worship. And that you called us as imager of God is to worship you, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you can, uh, you can bring your offering to this uh, account. Okay. Announcement para po doon sa mga mahilig sa kape, I have some coffee na i-recommend sa inyo. Pitrim. Type it sa inyong Shopee account. Pitrim or Nutra Green, Nutra Green. Search it and you can find it in Shopee. Pensa Shea, 
one box 10 sachet 299 pesos if you buy three boxes uh, libre na po ang delivery okay the good thing of that coffee is stevia ang kanyang sugar so natural sugar niya bagay doon sa mga diabetic uh, they can take that coffee okay so maraming salamat po and before we end uh, let's uh, thank the Lord sa buhay ng ating mga kapatid we have Sister Ana Dolores sa ating Zoom Carol Avendano, Caroline Floor we have uh, Brother Big, Sister Gina Fernandez we have Sister Mimi Chua, we have Roy we have Big Senorin we also have in um uh, Sa ating pong live Facebook, we have Sister Mirna Peran. We have Bishop Ephraim Sumangil. Okay. We have Tess Reyes. We have Dorivik, ang aming altar keeper doon sa Mount Apo. We have Sister Jet Lido. Uh, Marita de los Santos. Jess Vargas. Dominador Isep is watching also. Si Hazel Herrera at ang aking apo, Kayla, Sister Joyce, Cruz, Lolita Pajardo. We have Sister Dali Asio, Sampagita Senorin, Magnon Alacaba, Annabel Bas, Bas, Bas. We have Jonathan Asio at yung pang iba na ating pong mga kapatid na hindi ko na mention. Good morning po sa inyong lahat at sa lahat pong manunood pa ng ating uh, Sunday online worship I thank you very much and God bless you see you next Sunday ating pag-usapan part 3 ano ang nangyari sa Eden sa Tabernacle in spite ng tao ay nagkasala at nabubuhay sa kasalanan nag-provide si Lord ng way para yung Eden yung temple ay makapagpatuloy and that's the Tabernacle came in in the temple. Okay? So, pag-usapan niya natin next week kung, kung gano'n kahalaga itong tabernakulo na ito. Okay? Because Eden is a sanctuary. Tabernacle is a sanctuary where the presence of God dwells. Okay? So, God bless you po sa inyong lahat and see you next Sunday. Let's have now our closing shofar. Let us pray. Father, as we end this program, we want to give honor to you. Thank you, Abba, for all the marvelous things you have done today. Thank you for your love that you have revealed to us, and for the love that we share together as your body. May you bless each person who took time to gather here today and let your hand of protection be on them throughout the rest of the week. Let the work done here come to fruition, and let it all be done for your glory. Bless each of us and keep us safe and we are able to gather together again. We pray for all the words that you have sown into our hearts this day. Watch over them, protect them. May they take route and produce wonderful things, things of beauty and great blessing. And as we leave this place now, thank you that you walk with us. May we be alert to your promptings and live in your endless love. For yours is the kingdom, the power and glory, in this age and forevermore. Amen. Okay, thank you very much po. See you next Sunday. Thank you sa mga kapatid natin na nasa Zoom at ganun din po sa ating Facebook. God bless you.